there was something really going on in the minds and the hearts of the people in Acts chapter 4 that was different than Acts chapter 3 and Acts chapter 2 and Acts chapter 1. Everybody was stirred by the Holy Ghost to start sowing big money into the gospel. This is in your physical Bible. In Acts chapter 4, there was a financial move of the Holy Ghost where these people were empowered by the Spirit of God to have much seed to sow. And they sowed it on their altar with joy and with understanding. That's why they were so joyful, because they understood what they was doing. The seed was leaving their hands in a very fierce and faithful way. And they were touching the target in the spirit that God wanted them to touch. They were unlocking their life. I want to show you something. Let's go over here to the book of Acts right here. Because the Bible said in Acts chapter 4 that with great witness, they gave, with, with great power, they gave witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. And great grace was upon them in Acts chapter 4. And none of them lacked. The fact that the word of God said none of them lack, that means that the demon of lack was defeated by them. Wow. The demon of lack is able to facilitate or move and direct someone's life as long as they are not carrying the burden to soul. Stop all your scheming. Stop all your, 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 uh, your extra working. Stop all your, 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 your extra labor and soul. Stop trying to think that money is just going to fall out the sky. Receive the sowing anointing and let the Holy Spirit guide you into the wealthy place. Stop all the, oh, in one day, I'm going to become rich. I just play this card. I become rich in one day. Stop all of that. Operate in purity and the genuine kingdom of heaven. You ain't got to compete with nobody. You ain't got to be mad at nobody. And you ain't got to think, oh, you know, I need to stop them because uh, 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 I don't want them to go ahead of me. I don't want them to have more than me. You don't have to do all that nonsense. All you have to do is just sow. Just sow on your altar. Just sow on your altar. These people in Acts chapter 4, what they caught the revelation that God was unable to bring them into certain things because they wasn't honoring him. They was not fanatic about sowing. Yes, you could be fanatic about prayer. Yes, you could be fanatic about fasting. Yes, you could be fanatic about the prophetic and all these different doctrines, angels and seeing angels. You could be all enthusiastic, but are you honoring your God? And if you're not honoring your God, nothing else matters. The seed was, was the training that happened in their brain. They received the sowing anointing. And they began to understand that the Spirit of God wanted them to sow. That the Spirit of God wanted them to operate in a bold approach to the throne of God, celebrating him and showing him how much they respected him. And they took on this sowing anointing and it changed everything around them. They had financial investors that was buying their properties. So they had set out to make money by selling their houses, selling what they possess. And while they was in that sowing anointing, the Holy Spirit sent people that was willing to buy their homes at the price that they had set it. So if they said, I want, I want to set my house for sale at $1.4 million dollars. 
there was people that were saying, I'll, I'll buy that house for one point. So who was sending the people? Let me ask you. See, I'm bringing the scripture to light. Who was sending the people? Who was sending the people that agreed to the amount that they wanted to sell the home for? They were saying, okay, I want to sell my home for 300000 And the person would pop up and say, okay, I'm going to buy that home. I'll, I'll, I'll buy it for 300000 So who was guiding them to agree to invest in the people's real estate? It was the Holy Spirit of God. The Holy Ghost, he, the spirit of truth, was guiding investors to them while they were sowing. That's how, you, you know people, if they don't live a sowing life, you can't say that they know God. How could you, tell, how could you meet somebody they don't understand sowing and then they tell you that they know God? And sowing is where you get to know how the Lord operates in the invisible realm to bring people in the physical realm to bless you and invest in you and favor you and like you and help you. How are you going to know that if you're a seed eater? How, just tell me, how will you know that the Lord is a multiplier of seed if you haven't sold none? People that don't sow don't know God. People that don't keep on sowing don't know God. Because why would you stop something that is carrying the power to prosper and protect you? Think about it. Why would you stop doing something that is carrying healing, deliverance, angelic ministry, progress, favor with God and with men? Why would you stop doing it? The non-sower don't know God and the sower that stops don't know God. To keep on sowing, you have to know Jesus. The one with the five loaves and two fish, the young lad, gave it to Jesus because he knew Jesus was the man. He knew that Jesus was packing power. Don't feel bad for me. I don't need these five loaves and two fish. I'm going to pit it into Jesus, and I'm going to receive more than I ever received throughout the course of my life. Don't worry. I could sacrifice this meal that I set for myself. I'm going to sow it into Jesus. And it's going to bring forth the gospel vision in this region. The region will be saturated with what the kingdom of heaven wanted to accomplish today as I sow this five loaves and two fish. Seed faith is the introduction to a life without limits. Seed faith is an introduction to a life without lack. Seed faith is an introduction to a life without lust. See, you already is targeting and warring with your appetite because your appetite want to decide how money is spent. Your appetite want to decide how you should handle and how you should manage money. And you notice that the flesh always have you manage money by not sowing it. You don't think about sowing. You forget about sowing. You go months without sowing, weeks without sowing, and then you up there talking about you know God. Baby, you ought to slap yourself. You ought to become the doctor that slapped you when you came out your mother's womb. You ought to slap yourself and say, wake up. How am I claiming that I love God so much and I ain't even enthusiastic about the thing that he said that he loved? Something wrong with me. I have deceived myself if I am not crazy about sowing and this is what the God that I say that I serve said that he loved. Always remember this. Seed sowing is a restoration of how your life was supposed to look. Seed sowing is God being able to plant you in your own garden of Eden. Seed sowing is where the Holy Spirit 
can start talking to you about the raw perspective he have about things that's happening in your life currently. Sometimes people don't even be knowing where the spirit of God stand concerning things. They be up there telling us, Lord, please save this person. Please heal this person. And while you see so in the Holy Spirit will, will, will give you access to the raw anointing that he have, the perspective he have about the situation. And he'll tell you, I'm not trying to heal them. And you'll be shocked. But your seed will give you access to the raw perspective of God. His raw truth so that you don't waste your time trying to fix what he not fixing, pursue what he not pursuing and complete what he not completed. He's the author and the finisher of your faith. You don't want no fake faith. Oh, I'm pitting my faith for God to do this. And God, I, I, that's not even the word of the Lord. I, I, I'm not on that type of time. That's not my itinerary, and that's not my focus. Honoring God cures you of inaccuracy. If you take a note, write that down. Honoring God in cures you of inaccuracy. Error in your spirit and soul is dissolved as you keep on investing in God. Investment into King Jesus pulls his righteous nature within your own soul. I'm going to say this again. Investing in King Jesus pulls his righteousness into your soul. The way in which he is thinking and doing a thing is now wrapped up in your soul. Always remember this. What you name your seed may not happen in the time frame that you, you expected it to happen, but it will happen no matter what. The seed has never failed one sower in the history of sowing. There hasn't been one sower that has been able to say, I sold my way out and I'm still not out. God was wrestling with Isaac because he had became Babylonian and worldly and fleshly and full of idolatry and witchcraft. And he had left the sowing that Abraham, his father, was operating in. And he thought it was another way to live godly. He thought it was another way to be God's friend. He thought it was another way to be blessed. He thought it was another way to have a relationship with God. And God came and checked him and said, no, no, no. Don't leave this famine. See, when you're not even sowing, you want to leave places before time. Wow. When you're not sowing, you want to leave workplaces and leave jobs and you easy offended. You ain't got no fight in you. You ain't got no patience in you. When you ain't sowing, you miss. When you're not sowing, you don't have endurance in the will of God and the placement of God and the location of God. You want to get out of Dodge. Every time trouble hits, you want to get out of Dodge. Sowing cures you of hastiness. You always want to be hasty when you're not honoring God. You want to decide quickly how something should be done. Or I don't like how I feel, so let me start doing it like this. Seed sowing gives you a soldier's mantle so that battles will not be won because you fleed. Yeah. Your seed keep you from having to flee from your Goliath. Understand that David was a sower all along. David understood honoring God. That's why it wasn't so much the power in the stones. It was the power in the sower. When he sowed the stones, that sowing anointing hit Goliath and knocked his big headed behind down. Did you hear what I say? Nobody could take down Goliath. 
they didn't have no altar of showing. But when David came on the scene, Goliath had to drop. 